When it comes to a career in crime fighting, the opportunities are endless and infinitely diverse. Here at West Wickham Park in Buckinghamshire, a roosting barn owl has ruined a small section of the 18th century paintings which adorn one of the classical facades. The National Trust is relying on the skill of specialist restorer Mark to painstakingly clean the painting. This kind of level of droppings is sort of you know, bigger than anything we've had to, uh, had to deal with before. It's a very delicate um, painted surface. Um, it's one of the very, very few external wall paintings in England um, left. In fact, West Wickham is incredibly fortunate in that it's got quite a few of them. We've basically got to do this um, using only dry, dry methods because the paint surface is um, quite soluble um, in water, so we're going to have to um, try and do it without using any, any liquid. So Mark needs to identify which tools he needs for the job. I'm going to try out various different types of brushes and uh, see which one of those works. They're sort of stencil brushes and cut down paint brushes and things. Um, I've also got um, these sponges uh, called Wishab sponges. They're self-abrading granular rubber. You can cut them into sort of wedges and basically they abrade against the surface and roll up the dirt um, and droppings in this case. Armed with his weapons of choice, Mark climbs the scaffolding to take a closer look at the damage. Well, it's pretty bad. A lot of the white droppings, which I think should be reasonably easy to um, remove, it's just almost like a, like a white lime wash has been splattered on it. The darker bits look like they're a bit thicker and therefore they may be a bit harder to remove. It's a lot of sort of insect debris and cobwebs. So what I'm going to do is just give it a bit of a, a dust down first and just get rid of anything that's loose that comes off first and then we know that we're left just with the droppings. After gently brushing away the surface debris, Mark tries out his brushes on the paintwork itself. I'm just going to try a fiberglass brush that I put on a, a surgical glove so we don't get the fibres in sticking in the hand. The fiberglass brush seems to be breaking the surface, and together with the sponge, they might prove to be the perfect combination. It seems to be coming off reasonably easily, both the fiberglass brush and the sponge. The sponge might well be the way to go. And one of the nice things about these sponges is that they're very, very gentle. Mark has identified the way forward, thanks to his experience and, most importantly, his patience. Now he can return the painting to its former glory. But cleaning this area is likely to take Mark a week. As morning breaks over West Wickham Park, specialist restorer Mark comes to the end of his painstaking task cleaning some 18th century wall paintings. He's been here so long, he's become part of the furniture. It's taken the five days that I estimated it, it would do. And we're just coming down to the, to the last couple of feet. The droppings have sort of have thinned out quite a bit here. The worst of the damage was obviously at the top. By the time we get down to the bottom here, it's much, more, it's much thinner and the droppings are more just the sort of the white, almost like a lime wash doesn't have so much of the urine and the, and the actual faeces and so on involved with it, so it's considerably easier to clean off. It's just almost like a surface dusting. Mark has spent the week diligently working away, removing all evidence of the barn owl with his fibreglass brushes and abrasive sponges. In his daily routine, Mark is required to clean up after bats and many different species of birds, but owls cause the most difficulty. Owl poo is particularly dangerous to paintings and other vulnerable surfaces because of their diet, um, which is sort of insects and small animals and so on. You get um, a lot of nitrates in the faeces, which is uh, alkaline and caustic, and that will obviously eat into the surface of the vulnerable paint. Um, it also is combined with uric acid from the urea, the urine, uh, and the two in combination are sort of a pretty violent cocktail for any kind of sensitive decorative surfaces. The National Trust now want to make sure that in future, paintings and birds won't mix. Some spikes have been put in along the top to stop roosting happening, either from owls or from pigeons or any other kind of birds, and obviously prevention is better than cure. After a week of laborious endeavour, Mark congratulates himself on a job well done. I think this, this does make the East Portico paintings look 
much more cared for. I think before when the droppings were essentially disfiguring the whole of this corner, it looked as though nobody really cared about what's you know, a terribly important painting. It's improved it and hopefully the public will appreciate that and, and also take on board the need for you know, sort of constant maintenance that all these, these buildings have to have. One person would agree, if he could, Giuseppe Mattia Borgnis, the artist who painted this masterpiece some 260 years ago.